government says all villages in the country to have electricity services. And in sports, Namungo FC confident of defeating Nyanga in a Premier League game tomorrow. Good evening, this is Capital News at 9.30. My name is Vanessa Victor. Let's start things off with the national news. Tanzania Revenue Authority TRA Customs Officers at Sirari Border Central Mara Region have seized the consignment of Itenge from China worth more than 200 million shillings while being smuggled into the country from Kenya. <laughs> Behind is African print fabrics from China. Owners evaded from paying tax by using illegal routes, but we were tipped by loyal citizens. I ask everyone using the Sirari border to use the main entrance so uh, that they can pay the right amount of tax. We formed a task force to assist in collecting revenue. I urge everyone not to smuggle any items. That period is long gone. Prime Minister Kasim Majalewa has said that the government is determined to ensure electricity services are available in all villages throughout the country, including 25 in Ruangwa district, where electricity is still not available. As far as debts is concerned, I know that Temesa is owed some money by a lot of governmental institutions. Secretary General want to have a list of all debtors and I'm giving them two months, June and July. By July 30th, all the money owed must be paid back to Timesa. Write to them, a copy must be sent to the Prime Minister's office. The three mentioned who are deeply involved in this matter, without forgetting the chief cashier who submitted a resignation letter, should stay away and allow the investigation to carry on without interference. Huyu Jonas Bakusa, Meneja wa Sibu na Fela, Yule Lesian, Kaitira Mgeja, Kuzamu Ndo Keshia, Aliyusika kwenye bilionde ya Saba, Ambaya Giamika Barua ya Kuacha Kazi. The number of presidential aspirants for Chama Chama Pinduzi CCM party in Zanzibar has reached 24 after one Kanim Salum collected nomination forms today, while some other aspirants have begun to return their forms, including Mohammed Hidya Mohammed. <laughs> In taking care of different infrastructure in Zanzibar, in education, health and other areas, which has brought joy to the people of Zanzibar, particularly those of us in the government. If Chama Chama Pinduzi Zanzibar accepts me in this capacity, then I will continue from where Dr. Shane left. This is a boost of confidence to me because everyone is saying that I can. But the party will decide who is suitable. The Minister of Land, Housing and Human Settlement Development, William Lukuvi, has erected the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry and officers of all districts in the country to initiate an inspection operation on all large farms that were given to investors so as to determine those who have failed to meet the investment criteria so that illegal action can be taken against them. The issue of issuance of title deeds is very important. A lot of landowners were never issued title deeds. You find that land belonging to the village is about 12,000 hectares, 
but are 20,000 hectares in the same village. We don't refute that, but at least it has to be developed. Our objective is to plan and identify every landowner, but we must gain momentum. Drivers of cargo tricycles in Dar es Salaam have called on the government through Tanzania Revenue Authority to clarify on the amount of taxes they are required to pay so as to avoid inconveniences caused by being stopped constantly. They claim that they've been sent by TRA when they stop us. They demand for revenue stickers. But we tell them that we've been using these motorcycles for more than 10 years and we've never applied for revenue stickers. It is not that we don't want to pay tax, but we must be shown a clear system to do so. The government of Kenya has commended Tanzania for supporting the country and vying for a seat in the UN Security Council. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and East African Cooperation, Professor Palamagamba Kabudi, has said the clarification has ended reports that Tanzania did not support Kenya in the endeavor. <laughs> Sisi hatuna, hatuna uoga wala unafiki wa kumambia mtu tunamunga mkono hadharani halafu tukaacha tuka, tuka, tuka kumunga mkono sirini au faragani. E, wote mnafahamu, msimamu wetu uko wazi. And over 1,000 small-scale traders who are selling their wares along the side of the road in Katoro, Heita region, will soon no longer have to do so after Gator Gold Mine gave over 1.5 billion shillings to start construction of a new modern market. <laughs> Katoro is growing rapidly and there is a lot of tradesmen who conduct their business from here. So in constructing this market, we hope that Katoro will develop even more. It has been implied that we are part of GATA and we are carrying out all projects by working together. The Katoro market will be one of a few unique economic centers in the Lake Zone. As a region, we will make sure that there is funds for projects. The government has directed China Geoengineering Corporation, which was given the contract to renovate Songwe International Airport in Bay region, to work day and night so that the project is completed on time after it was suspended due to heavy rains and the coronavirus pandemic. We can't continue delaying. All I want is for the project to be completed as soon as possible. I know it is possible due to current favorable climatic conditions and the contractor has agreed to work day and night. 14.7 billion shillings will be used to complete this project within eight months period. The contractor is already on the ground bringing his working tools and equipments ready to begin the exercise. The only challenge is accessing essential tools for the project as well as qualified experts for constructing the runway. Yeah, we, are, we are waiting for one uh, operator and they are coming, they are coming because now flight is, is available. That's all for the national news. International news is next. And in international news. 
Parliament and Senate in Burundi will swear in Prosper Bazompaza as the Vice President and Elaine Guillaume Bunyoni as Prime Minister tomorrow. The leaders will take their oaths a few days before the former leader of the country, Pierre Nkurunzinza, is laid to rest on Friday, the 26th of June, in the capital, Kitega. The Human Rights Commission in Uganda has called on the government to amend some sections of the Constitution in order to increase penalties given to those found to undermine human rights. The call comes a few days after some analysts said that the general election in the country next year is likely to be marked with incidents of human rights violations. The Human Rights Commission has received a total of 238 complaints, with 203 being male and 35 from female, since COVID-19 pandemic period started. To date, out of which 150 were reported against the Uganda police force. Government should urgently ratify the optional protocol of conventional against torture of 2006. We are reported against the Uganda police force. Three people have died from the coronavirus in Kenya as 155 others test positive in the last 24 hours. The death toll now stands at 128 with the total number of cases reported the country up to 4,952. Unfortunately, again, we've lost three more patients today succumbing to the disease, bringing our total number to 128. And we continue to highlight that it's important for those who may have any chronic conditions to really take care of their health, to ensure that they're sticking to their medication, because we continue to see that our patients that we're losing are those that have chronic conditions. And so our total number of those who've passed on comes on to 128. Of all the cases tested, we have 120 of them being male and 35 of them being female. The youngest is a one-year-old infant, whereas the oldest is 77. The cases are distributed across the following counties. In Nairobi, we have 104 cases. In Busia, we have 19. Rwanda has confirmed 59 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, the highest number of infections since the outbreak of the pandemic in March 14th this year. The Ministry of Health says the latest cases are from 2,287 samples tested in the last 24 hours. We are calling on motorcyclists and motorcycle users to adhere to government measures set in combating spread of COVID-19. And that's where we leave off with international news, but we'll be back with business news after this short break. As we talk to business leaders and experts in sectors that are transforming Tanzania's economy. We believe that the driver is the customer. To change the mindset of traditional HR to the digitalization. Make sure that everybody um, can get some access to financial services. And once we understand the vision of our leaders, we then need to be behind them and help them in achieving that vision. Business have involved mercantile operations, trade guilds for shared agricultural production, infrastructure, construction, financial sectors, tourism, and mining. Business edition on Friday at 8.15 p.m.
And now, in business news. The Minister of State, the Vice President's Office for Investment, Angela Kairuki, has directed regional commissioners from Iringa, Njombe and Mbeya regions to cooperate with investors in addressing various investment challenges in order to speed up development in the industrial sector. The investor has approved Sarkut and TIC efforts. I take this opportunity to remind those with projects that have not been registered by TIC to do so because there are several opportunities. The government is aiming at developing the sector in improving industrial economy as well as individual economic growth. Our factory has many plants, although the support we receive from our government means greatly to us because once we despaired on developing the dairy factory, please send our gratitude to the Honorable President. Tanzania Legumes Network has assured pigeon pea farmers of a reliable market in India and Europe due to a big demand for the commodity, as many countries which are producers of legumes have been affected by the coronavirus. There is a difference of about 30 million US dollars from our sales last year, where we sold the crop for about 100 million US dollars, although we still have hope of performing better. This year's international market perspectives is that it will be good enough, especially to pulse farmers from Shinyanga and Mwanza regions. They should expect a good market in India because production of the crop in other countries has dropped. Mobile company Tigo has launched a new service which will enable customers to buy airtime and other packages from Tigo and retail shops. All our packages on our new menu are traditional menu, available in the retail channel, and goes along with up-to-date technology. All Tigo customers should be ready to buy airtime in our shops. Tigarusha has no complications and is a service that is available from all Tigar shops and all our agents. This is the value that we are bringing to the table. That's all for Business News. Sports is next. Away first time, good start from from uh, Bolt. Bolt leading a moment and going away. Gay trying to go with him and he's going to be dragged through the second place, but he's going to win it by two metres. Away first time, good start from Pat from uh, Bolt. Bolt leading a moment and going away. Gay trying to go with him and he's going to be dragged through the second place, but he's going to win it by two metres. He did lose to Lynn. Now in sports. Namungo FC are planning to frustrate young Africans even more when the two teams which are competing for the second position in the mainland, mainland Premier League meet tomorrow. We're well prepared both physically and mentally so we can play well and get the three points in their way round. Most of the players that were injured have also returned and so, I believe it will be possible for us to get three points. Tanzania Baseball and Softball Association TABSA is planning to host the 2020 Youth Olympics qualifying tournament in the country with five nations expected to participate. 
Sir. We were asked if, as Tanzania, we can, and we said we can. That is why we are here now with my squad, as well as an officer from the BMT, so we can discuss and develop plans. Scott McTominay has signed a new five-year contract at Manchester United to keep him at the club until June 2025 with the option to extend for a further year. Who was given his debut by Jose Mourinho in 2017 has become a key part of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side and established himself as a regular starter for the club. Indeed, McTominay has made 28 appearances in all competitions this season and has been rewarded for his consistent performances with a new deal. The midfielder said, whilst I understand that we all have so many things to think about at the moment, I'm so happy to sign this contract and play a part in the future ahead of this team. Juventus forward Cristiano Ronaldo overtook Rui Costa to become the leading Portuguese scorer in Serie A history on Monday. Ronaldo slotted a first-half penalty down the middle in Juve's 2-0 win over Bologna, a result that saw the Bianconeri move four points clear at the top of the table. The goal was Ronaldo's 22nd in Serie A this season, one more than the 21 he managed in his debut campaign in Turin following his move from Real Madrid in 2018. In reaching 43 goals, the 35-year-old also moved beyond Rui Costa as the Portuguese player with the most goals in Italy's top flight. Rui Costa spent eight years in Serie A playing for Fiorentina and then Milan between 1994 and 2006. Sergio Aguero is hopeful of playing again this season despite the knee problem sustained in Manchester City's 5-0 home win over Burnley. Here is more. Striker who was expected to have a scan on Tuesday is thought to have avoided ligament damage that might have ended his campaign. City's club record scorer may miss about a month, meaning he could be available before the Premier League season finishes and for the FA Cup final on 1st of August should the holders get there. City resumed their Champions League campaign on 7th or 8th of August with the last 16 second leg against Real Madrid. City hold a 2-1 advantage. And that sports item ends our news bulletin. On behalf of everyone who worked to bring you this bulletin, I am Vanessa Victor. Thank you for watching. Good night. Vegetation provides erosion control, water detention, biofiltration, and aesthetic values. Hence the need to protect. You can watch Capital News live on our social media accounts, YouTube Capital TV and Facebook Capital Television Tanzania from Monday to Friday at 9.30 p.m. Don't forget to subscribe and put notification on.